It's time to go hungry. Now, the best way to illustrate the rations Sixth Army have is by taking a look at the bread ration, which seems to be the main element every source talks about. The bread ration is about half of the ration that the German soldiers would have been given per day. Prior to the encirclement, the German soldiers were receiving 16 ounces of bread a day. This is basically a loaf of bread. Now this loaf is actually 14 ounces, so it's actually slightly smaller than what the Germans would have had. Uh, but this is what they would have been given every day. <laughs> Lots and lots of bread. Now, there's people out there that say calories don't mean anything, and, and that's fine, but those arguments aside, a 16 ounce loaf of bread will provide you with 1,200 calories. According to David Glantz, the recommended amount of calories for a soldier fighting in severe combat conditions is 2,500 calories. And in fact, 2,500 calories is what the British NHS recommends for a man to consume daily in order to maintain his weight. So again, 16 ounces of bread is just under half a German soldier's calorie intake. The rest is made up by other foodstuffs like meat and so on. <laughs> made a slight recovery. This means that when on the 23rd of November 1942, Sixth Army ordered that the bread ration be cut to eight ounces, that's nine and a half slices of bread per day. This is 600 calories. If all the other rations halved as well, this would mean that they're receiving 1,200 calories at a time that they should be getting 2,500. Bearing in mind that the guys in the trenches are freezing at this point, and they're fighting too. So, they're needing more energy in order to simply stay alive. And now they're on a diet of half of what they need on the first day. And this is a 71-day siege. And while I'm no diet expert, there are websites out there saying that if you reduce your calorie intake by 500 calories a day from your recommended, you will lose one pound of weight a week. A reduction of 1,000 calories, which is what this is, and we're talking a loss of two pounds per week. And this is 71 day seed, which is seven, uh, 10 weeks. At that then, we will lose 20 pounds, or roughly 1.4 stone, throughout the siege. The average man is 14 stone, so they're going to lose one-tenth of their body weight in seven weeks on this diet. And that's only the, you know, if it stays like this on the first day, and it didn't. The rations were cut again and again. By the time you get to the 26th of December, the bread ration is cut to two ounces a day. That's two and a half slices of bread. Two ounces of bread is 150 calories. Again, assuming uh, this is half of the food they're receiving, they're getting 300 calories a day instead of 2,500. One source says they were receiving 200 grams of deliciously delicious horse meat, which is roughly 286 calories. This is 200 grams of steak. Um, so don't be mistaken to think this is actually horse meat. But here's the thing to know. We're talking extremely cold conditions and there's little to no wood available or fuel. In some cases, they were eating this stuff raw. One source says that they, you can't actually eat horse meat raw. So they're certainly struggling. But they were getting 30 grams of fat, which is 270 calories as well. Um, but... Don't worry, you're still receiving three cigarettes a day. Mmm, tuck in. Uh, not sure how many calories a cigarette is, but probably not a lot. Why are they still shipping in cigarettes? I, I don't know, I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I'm sure the priority is food, right? But I, I don't smoke, so. So let's do the math. 150 calories of bread, 286 calories of horse meat, and 270 calories of fat. That's 706 calories. However, the same source that says they would got all this horse meat and fat also claims they were getting seven ounces of bread, not two, which seems unlikely considering the bread ration was reduced to two grams at this point. So these numbers may even be less than that. If a reduction of 500 calories per day is a pound a week in weight loss, at this point, they're probably losing four pounds a week. 
There's 38 days of the siege left at this point, so that's roughly five weeks. This means they're going to have lost another, another 21 pounds or 1.4 stone again in that five weeks. But there's a problem with this, and that is that we know Kurt Zeitler, chief of the army general staff, the man who replaced the beloved Halder, is so appalled by the suffering of the 6th Army's troops that he goes on a diet. He only eats what they eat. And according to Anthony Beaver, who's getting his information from Albert Speer, Zeitler lost 26 pounds in two weeks. It was that bad that Hitler ordered him to give up the diet and return to normal eating. So clearly, the soldiers in the 6th Army were not getting enough food. And they're losing a lot of body weight in the process. Paulus is reporting that his men are starving to death. And the first deaths by starvation are recorded on the 21st of December 1942, less than a month into the siege. And this is before we have a reduction in rations down to two and a half slices of bread. These are terrible conditions, especially in the extreme cold. Now... You hear that the Soviets took somewhere in the region of 170,000 German prisoners of war during the final stages of the battle. Glantz calculates that from people flown out of the pocket, 6th Army probably had 2,600 men left within it. That means that 99,000 men of 6th Army perished in the pocket. But here's the deal. 6th Army's combat strength had been 40,000 men on the 21st of November. This decreased to 34,000 on the 6th of December and reached uh, 28,200 men by the 18th of December. Let's just assume for a minute that 40,000 combat troops were in the pocket and that none of them were flown out. That's 40,000 of the 206,000 men who were in the pocket. Let's also assume that every single one of these combat troops fought to the last and didn't surrender. That would be 40,000 of the 99,000 men who perished in the pocket. So what happened to the other 49,000 men? Yeah, I'm certain some of these would have died in artillery strikes and, and whatever else, but it appears that a good portion of these 99,000 men, most of whom were not combat troops, would have simply starved to death. This includes the Russian auxiliary troops drafted by the the Germans. This includes rear service troops, again, not frontline combat troops. They were starving to death. And the men who did surrender were going to be on the borderline of death as well. It's clear that they didn't all suddenly receive bountiful quantities of food as soon as they surrendered to the Soviets. I think it's obvious why so many German soldiers from 6th Army didn't survive the war. Of the 107,000 men who surrendered, only 5,000 ever saw Germany again. But this death ratio is actually quite high for German troops surrendering to the Soviets. Of the 1,415,000 German prisoners of war taken by the Soviets, 459,000 died in captivity. That's 32.4%. One hundred 2,000 of these, almost a quarter, were 6th Army. 102,000 men died from the 107,000 men that were taken prisoner. That's a death percentage for 6th Army prisoners of 95%. Why? What's the difference? Why would an average German soldier on the Eastern Front die in Soviet captivity 32.4% of the time, but the 6th Army soldier die 95% of the time? It's quite obvious that their poor diet prior to their capture is what did it. This was the main difference between the average German soldier and the 6th Army soldier. And that's not to say that the German troops weren't treated badly. Yeah, they were. But there's a difference between the 6th Army and the rest of the German prisoners. Otherwise, we would see the same 95% death ratio for all German troops, which we don't. Poor diet in the weeks prior to their surrender, explains this. But here's something you don't often hear. And that is, it's quite an interesting one. On the 31st of December, Chirikov reports his men are existing on 
100 grams per day, which is roughly 500 calories. Six Army are starving, but so are 62nd Army. And let's not forget, they're under siege as well. And they've been under siege for a long time. Six months. To quote David Glantz, If the German troops were suffering from severe deprivation, things were often nearly as bad on the Soviet side, particularly in the ruins of Stalingrad's factory district, where death was a constant companion. As I mentioned in last Monday's video, the three to 4,000 Soviet prisoners of war and civilians that were trapped in a camp within the 6th Army pocket starved to death. The story of Dulag 205 is horrifying. This was a transit camp close to the village of Alexeevka, three miles from Gumrak airfield inside the pocket. That the food for the prisoners was the scraps from the kitchens of German soldiers and sometimes the corpses of dead horses which were thrown into the camp. Water was not delivered to the camp and the prisoners were forced to use dirty snow collected inside the camp. Additionally, no fuel was brought to the camp which forced the prisoners to use fuel from the clothes of the dead in order to make fires for preparing the food comprising leftovers and dead horses. And when there was insufficient clothing to be taken from the dead, they used their own uniforms. However, even this food, made up of scraps and horses, was of miserable quantity. As a consequence of the starvation in the camp, prisoners were reduced to cannibalism. Despite this, rations were not given to the prisoners. And you have to remember that the camp was only really designed to accommodate 500 prisoners. The prisoners couldn't sleep lying down because there was that many of them. There was no bunks anyway. There was no fuel and there's no heating. But there were beatings. The guards removed the prisoners' clothing and kept it for themselves. And they also set their dogs on them. These are the names of the officers in the camp who were captured when the camp was liberated on the 31st of January 1943 and were later tried and executed in 1944. These were not SS guards. These were Wehrmacht officers, the highest rank being Oberleutnant. And this is in addition to the sufferings of the Stalingrad civilian population. Thanks to numerous refugees, in August 1942, the population of the city was roughly 400,000. The civilians were evacuated and bombed by the Luftwaffe, with 75,000 of these dying as a result of this. At least 200,000 civilians were still in the city when the Germans entered it. 186,000 were then exported to the Ukraine and Germany, and most of these would die in captivity. By the 2nd of February, St Stalingrad's civilian population had fallen to 7,655 people. Thus, simple but grisly arithmetic indicates that the actual death toll of civilians in Stalingrad city was at least 80,000. And even if only half the forced labourers perished, that would bring the total to more than 170,000 people. Men, women, children, dead. There were no SS troops at Stalingrad. The German soldiers who starved at Stalingrad were just as guilty as the Nazi high command. There is no innocence in this war. This is a brutal conflict on all sides. The Soviets are just as bad. The British and the Americans were all committed crimes. But this idea that the Wehrmacht was innocent and that it was just the SS's fault or just the Nazi high command's fault, this idea is rubbish. The men who marched to the east deprived the local population of food. They took the food off them and this led to starvation. Sixth Army did this as well. And yes, you can sympathize with the men involved, but there comes a point where you have to remember that these men were not nice people and that this was not a nice war. Sixth Army were not innocent. And when you hear about how they went hungry, you've got to remember that they are not innocent. Thank you to my patrons. You make these videos possible because you're awesome. If you enjoy this video, 
please be sure to share and tell everyone about this channel. I'll be very grateful for that. As a final note, it's a good job the oil crisis for the Germans was as bad as it was if they drove into the Soviet Union on trucks instead of horses, Sixth Army wouldn't have had that deliciously delicious horse meat on which to sustain themselves. Sometimes this meat was rotten, which is why they ended up in hospital. <laughs> on that note, thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.